creative friends. Today, we're checking out the blackest paints in the world. Here in my hot little hands, I'm holding three of the blackest paints in the world. Black 3.0, Muzu Black, and the new one, Black 4.0. These paints are what we call ultra blacks, the blackest black paints you can actually buy. But what the heck does that actually mean? Black's black, right? How can you get blacker than black? Today, we're going to compare them all and find out which is darkest, which is physically toughest, and are any of them actually useful? So let's test them all and find out. Before we begin our test today though, there is drama with the quest for the blackest black and that starts all the way back in 2014. Prior to this dark timeline we're on now, there was a bright and shiny time called 2014. Frozen had told us all the lyrics of Let It Go, the Ice Bucket Challenge was in full swing and a paint called Vanta was invented that was very black. Vanta Black technically wasn't a paint. It was more a grown nanotube covering that is super toxic and very hard to produce. But let's not quibble. As you can see, it's very cool and very, very black. But what's not so cool is that in 2016, things became a little controversial. A British artist named Anish Kapoor purchased exclusive rights to use Vanta Black in his artworks. That's exclusive only to him. No one else writes to use this ultimate black. This guy right here, he's the guy who did the shiny bean artwork thing in Chicago and a ton of other big projects. He's a very big deal and obviously a very wealthy guy and that was a problem. The art world was up in arms. How dare anyone monopolize such an amazing unique material as Vanta Black. Particularly someone as obviously wealthy and let's say as controversial as a figure like Anish. In stepped a British artist called Stuart Semple. This guy right here. He ran a Kickstarter and developed his own black as black paint that was made available for everyone to use. Except for Anish Kapoor. Hilariously, if you visit his site Culture Hustle to this day, you still have to sign an agreement you're not Anish Kapoor before you can buy anything. Anyway, there have been multiple versions of this paint created right up to what we have here, the Black 3.0. And it reigns supreme as the blackest black you could actually buy. That is until 2020, when a new contender for the blackest black was created in Japan. Enter Muzu Black. Again, another acrylic paint, but it claims even blacker black than the 3.0. Muzu Black was the only real competition until a few weeks ago when suddenly Stuart Semple releases you guessed it, Black 4.0. The new contender to the crown of darkness. Science sunshine here. You may notice I'm saying black a lot. As we expected in a video about black, but I feel like I should define what I mean by black here. Black in art is used as a color. Call it a shade or tone, whatever you like, but we grab it and use it just like any other color. Black in physics, though, is the absence of light, and that's what these specialist paints claim. Their claim to blackness is based upon not absence, but how little light these paints reflect back to us. Black 3.0 claims a light absorption of 99%, while Muzu Black claims 99.4%, but now Black 4.0 claims 99.95%. Only 1% difference between them. But what does that mean in practical terms? And whether they actually appear blacker? Well, we're gonna find out. Thanks, Science Sunshine. First up, let's have a look at the paints themselves. This is Black 3.0. It's by Stuart Semple, and this is the original Renegade paint. Once you confirm you are not Anish Kapoor, the Culture Hustle website has extensive information about it and the uses. It comes in 150 mil, one litre and six litre containers. It has some excellent information about the paint and how to apply it. We also find it's supposed to smell like coffee. It does. I have here a 150 ml pot. The packaging is very nice. It comes in this matte cardboard tube with the glossy stripes. Opening it up, the plastic container is fun with the bright, bold pink branding and further information on how to use the paint. This is the Muzu Black Paint from Copro. The Copro website is in Japanese, and if you're like me and don't read Japanese, it can be quite confusing. Thankfully, there are several third-party sites that have quite a bit of information on them. One of the best being the black market. You can buy this paint in 100 mil, one liter and 15 liter packs. And the site has excellent information on everything you'd want to know about the paint, including application and light absorption. 
The packaging on the Muzu Black is not really that exciting. It looks like I've got a Japanese version from Amazon here, but there is also apparently English branded versions. And the latest contender to the crown, Black 4.0. Like the Black 3.0, the Culture Hustle website is a wealth of information and the paint itself comes in 150ml, 1 litre and 6 litres. I have the 150ml here. It comes in a cardboard box with some graphic patterns on it. The packaging is pretty rudimentary and fairly unexciting considering what it contains. Opening the pack we find the Black 4.0 in plastic and then after removing that, a plastic tube. The tube is pretty simple with some info about the black logo and on the other side another graphic design. For such an expensive paint the branding is a little bit of a letdown. That's our three main contenders and what we're going to do today is run them through several tests. I want to see how well these paints handle light and how usable they are in a practical art sense. To make things more interesting, we're going to throw in two other paints to compare with. What I would call normal, regular people paints. First up, this here is some black acrylic paint I found in my drawer. It's basically the cheapest you can buy. I think it came from the reject shop here in Australia, which is like the US $2 shop. And lastly, this is chalkboard paint from White Knight. I went and visited Bunnings and according to the guy behind the desk, this is the maddest paint they had. These two normal blacks are going to give us a reference to see just how good these specialist paints are. Before we begin, all our specialist black paints state that airbrushing or priming is always going to give us a better light absorption ratio. This of course being because you won't have brush strokes to provide edges to reflect light in your work. I don't own an airbrush, so I'm just going to have to be as careful with my painting as I can to minimise this. To be fair, I think this is a valid use as they aren't marked as specific airbrush paints. So I'm assuming a lot of you would just paint it on like I'm going to. First up, let's do a flat paper test. So this test is a very simple one. We're going to paint five swatches on paper and compare the results. This is hot press 300 GSM paper. And the reason I've chosen hot press over cold is that the tooth of the paper is a lot finer. I'm hoping we'll get better results with the paper's smoothness. I'm not priming this test as I want to see how it goes straight on. I'm also using a nice soft brush as recommended by the instructions for this test. I've opted to use an older one as I'm honestly not sure what any of these paints will do to the brushes. Okay, let's mark up our board. The first paint we're starting with is Black 3.0. Black 3.0 comes out of the plastic container and feels very much like I'd say any acrylic paint feels like, except thicker. The paintbrush loads up relatively easily, although again, it feels thick. It does take a little bit more than I'm used to to get some on the brush, and it does sort of sit on the bristles a bit. The coffee smell is much more pleasant than that chemically painty smell that I'm used to, but it doesn't last super long as you're painting. I'm going to apply a very thin layer to start Start with using as little paint as possible but I want to get it as even as possible. First impressions are that this paint does feel very thick when you lay it down. To a point it feels like I'm pushing it around with my brush rather than painting. It's quite difficult to get a straight fine line. As to that coffee smell when we opened it I can't really notice it now. It is black though and with slightly more effort than I'm used to it is sticking quite nicely to the paper. I think with more experience with this paint I'd be a bit better at painting with it but longer smooth the strokes seem to work well with it. Up next is our Muzu Black. I'd heard reports that the Muzu Black had a really strong odour and people talk about getting ill from it. To be honest, I just figured it would be good footage if I wore a mask from the Muzu, but as soon as I opened the lid, the paint hit me like a wall. The smell is actually incredibly strong and it immediately gave me a headache. So from now on, I'm using a mask with the Muzu. The Muzu is immediately much thinner than the previous 3.0. It sits on the brush really easily and feels initially like something completely different to acrylic paint. While it's water cleanup, it feels like it's oil based. This paint seems a lot easier to move than the Black 3.0 and at the first stroke, I'm getting a lot more coverage for a lot less effort than the previous paint. It is easy to do long strokes with this paint and seems to stick to the paper very well. Even though I'm wearing the mask, 
I can smell this paint through it and phew, it is smelly. I think the next test I'm going to wear gloves as well. I'm also noticing it's bonding to the bristles of the brush. It's a softer synthetic brush and it's not really sticking them as they're still individual, but it's a strange result. I'm glad I didn't use my good brushes for this test. Let's move on to the black 4.0 now. The black 4.0 comes out thick, like really, really thick. This feels like a chunky tomato sauce rather than a paint, to be honest. Even when I try and load up the paintbrush, I'm immediately noticing the paint struggles to stick to the bristles. It's sticking to itself or more globbing to itself, but it doesn't like the brush. Black 4.0 is different. It's very thick feeling. You can see with the first stroke how it's almost mounded where the brushes have left it. It really doesn't have a great deal of coverage, to be honest, and where the paint runs out, it doesn't gradient, it sort of just stops. Like I'm having to put some muscle into it. It's almost grippy. As soon as I'm putting it onto the paper, it doesn't want to let go, which is making it very tricky to spread out evenly and smoothly. It feels very much like it wants to stick to itself, but the paper not so much. Onto our cheap acrylic. This one comes out and loads up exactly what you'd think. It's basically the definition of generic paint on a brush. The paint goes down well, and as acrylic tends to do, it feels like it sticks to the paper very well. Everything with this one just feels normal. And our Bunnings Black. For those of you that don't know Bunnings, it's a big shed in Australia where we buy garden supplies and hardware stuff. And a sausage in a bit of bread if we're lucky. I've just noticed this paint is an enamel and oil based. It loads up the brush exactly what you'd expect. It's thinner than the acrylic, but it has pretty good coverage for the paint it is and sticks well to the paper. I'm gonna let these dry for a few hours just to make sure that they are 100% set and then onto the second coat. Okay, first coat is dry and as you can see, we're starting to get some interesting results. But let's not judge things yet until we add another coat. This time, I'm definitely putting on my rubber gloves and when it does come time to use it, I'm going to make sure the dog is out of the house before I paint the muzu. The second coat is going on very well. Firstly, the black 3.0 does appear to sit much happier on itself. It's almost like a primer here. I'm getting better coverage and it sticks well. The Muzu Black is still going down easily, but it doesn't feel any easier than the first coat. It is filling in some of the lighter areas, but the first coat was fairly good. The Black 4.0 is a massive improvement here. It's still incredibly thick and still feels like it's trying to stick to itself rather than the brush, but now it's going down over Black 4.0. It's basically filling in the lighter areas much better. The acrylic is going down very well. It has no issues with the paper, but like the Black 3.0, sits much happier on top of itself. Much like the Bunnings Black, this one feels like it needed that initial coat to seal things beneath it as well. I'll let it dry and then we can have a look. And here it is, here is our test board and it worked out pretty well. Honestly, there's nothing that's done super badly, but you can see immediately our specialist blacks on the top row are much blacker than the two reference blacks here below. Now, the tricky part with these tests is how I can show you at home how actually black these paint swatches are. With cameras and color grading and all the compression that happens with this image, you see from me to you, colors can end up vastly different on the screen than they are in real life. So we're going to look at this a few ways. Firstly, I'm just going to put it flat on my table and we're going to look at it straight down. Looking at it here, the black 3.0 appears to be the lightest of the three blacks. It has slight ridges on it from the brush. So I guess if it was airbrushed, it would be smoother. I don't know whether it would be terribly much blacker though. It's fairly neutral in reflection and I'm not seeing a color tint to it like I do with the two cheap blacks, both of which are a bit brown. Muzu black to my eyes appears blacker by a large margin. It feels like it's flatter and matter, almost chalky looking. I can see a few brush strokes here, but it definitely has less reflection than any of the others. Black 4.0 is kind of gritty. It definitely is darker than the 3.0, but not close to the Muzu. This has a lot of texture in it that's come down with the actual painting. And I suspect if you could get rid of that, it'd be blacker still. But realistically, it's so thick and problematic putting it down. Unless you used an airbrush, I don't know how that would happen. Okay, so another good way to see how light reflective these paints are is for me to increase the light in my studio. 
Basically, what's happening here is a paint that has a higher light absorption will remain darker longer than one that doesn't. Let me just change my camera here and up we go in the ISO. There we go. Right. Once we've overexposed, the differences in the blacks becomes much more apparent. It's really obvious the Muzu looks again to be absorbing much more light, making it a darker paint. You can see here in the black 4.0 how the brush and the way the paint has worked really has put down quite deep reflective grooves onto our swatch. The 3.0 is similar, but nowhere near as bad as the 4. I guess that's primarily due to the thickness. One thing I do notice here is interestingly, the Muzu texture looks a little bit like velvet rather than painted on paint. For the next part of this test, let's see how tough these paints actually are. What I'm going to do is scratch each one with my fingernail and then lightly with this paint scraper. The idea here is to see how it's bonded to the paper and realistically how strong the paint actually is. I'm not going to press hard enough to rip the paper, but I'll be putting some beans in it. I'm going to do this from what I can see as lightest to darkest. So first off, I'm starting on our Bunnings Black. It feels like a blackboard, so it's super gross on my nail. But as you can see, I've scraped a noticeable amount off. Next, the generic acrylic. This is pretty tough. I'm getting a bit of a mark, but not a huge amount. Black 3.0. This is excellent. It's really strong and it feels really tough. Pretty much exactly the same as the generic acrylic. Black 4.0. Wow. There is a lot coming off here. Basically, it feels like chalk. I'm dragging a heap with my nail. Musi is a lot tougher than I was expecting, to be honest. It's not quite black 3.0, but it's pretty strong. There's a bit of powder, but again, not much. Over to the scraper. Bunnings Black is pretty much exactly the same, just wider. Again, that generic acrylic is really strong. Black 3.0 is doing excellent. It's no weaker than the generic acrylic. In fact, it might be slightly stronger. Black 4.0, holy moly, look at all that coming off. I feel like there's more paint coming off the 4.0 in one scrape than the entire paint on everything else combined. And our Muzu, again, this is not what I was expecting. I'd been told this was very weak, but it's actually pretty good. I'm just giving it a little extra here because to be fair, I thought it was going to dissolve. Well, that was really unexpected. What Black 4.0 did was what I was expecting the Musu to do. Keep in mind that this test doesn't really tell us if the paints will disintegrate with time or anything like that, but it's a good way to see if they're tough or not. One of the things I'd heard about the original Vanta Black was that it's very delicate and that limited its use as an art medium. So it's really interesting to see what happened here. Okay. That's our paper test. On to test two, where we paint on primed board. So for our second test, we're gonna swatch out our paints all over again. This time though, we're going to paint them all onto this handy piece of board I prepared earlier. We're going to prime the surface here and see how the paints look. What we're looking for is whether the paints will go down smoother on a primed surface whether they will stick better and because the surface should be less absorbent, whether these paints will actually be blacker or not. Let's see what happens. Okay, I'm just using a generic white spray on primer here on what is a three millimeter MDF board. I'm going to coat it a few times and lightly sand it to make sure it's all pretty smooth. Once that's done, I'm going to mask around the swatches this time as I struggle to keep a sharp edge on the paper test due to the thickness of the paint. Well, first thing I'm noticing on the first coat of the black 3.0 is that it's actually much easier to move this paint around on the prime board here. I'm definitely not having to work so hard. Although the coverage isn't quite so good, it feels like it's sticking to the primer, but on the paper, I felt it was much grippier. For our Muzu, I'm back in my PPA as I don't want to die a horrible paint related death. It feels similar to put down to how it did in the paper actually, but this one's getting much better coverage. It's still much smoother to put down than the 3.0 and definitely looks blacker immediately. For a paint that may in fact be able to be used as a chemical weapon, it's actually very easy to paint with. Black 4.0 is 
again, very different. It's really hard to get a smooth, even layer of paint over the whole square. It doesn't really want to stick to the primer at all. I'm very carefully having to force the paint into place. You can see here as I paint it down that the paint is sticking to the paint that sits on the board currently and it's all sliding about. It's not quite as tough to move around as it was in the paper test, but it's pretty close. I think that like the 3.0, it's bonded quicker to the paper surface, but with the smoothness of the matte primer, it's really struggling. The acrylic immediately sits really nicely on top of the primer. I'm getting more coverage straight away from less paint as I guess the surface isn't as absorbent. Very similar to the Bunnings Black here. It went down very quickly and very easily. I'm just going to give these paints a few hours to dry and then I'll start on a second coat. Righto. So this is what we're looking at for our first coat on the board. As you can see, all of them are fairly spotty in how they've laid down, except for the Bunnings Black. Again, immediately I'd say the Muse is likely the darkest black, but the Black 4.0 is fairly close behind. Onto our second coat. Immediately I can see the Black 3.0 is much happier going down onto a coat of 3.0. It's sticking very nicely and sitting well. The Musu Black has actually made quite a difference going down onto the original coat of the Musu. With the paper test, I didn't feel there was much of a difference between coats, but here I feel like the second coat is much blacker and flatter. There is a lot of holes in that dried black 4.0 and that's because we struggled so much with the first coat. The second coat is going down much better. Black 4.0 loves to stick to Black 4.0, but again, like the paper test, I feel the coating here is going to be very thick and likely lumpy due to the brush textures. The second coat of the acrylic is sitting nicely. It paints easily and hasn't had any issues with coverage. Again, like the Bunnings Black, this one has probably had the smoothest painting experience. I'm assuming it's all due to the oil base. It allows it to settle nice and flat when it's brushed in. I'll let them dry and we can check it out. Well, here it is. Here is our painted board. I did notice very quickly doing this test that all three of our specialist paints really struggled on that first coat. The Black 3.0 and the Muzu were okay sitting on a primer, but it wasn't as easy as with the bare paper. The Black 4.0 was a nightmare. And as you saw, basically moved itself all around the board struggling to stick. So let's take off our masking tape and have a look at the paints under the light. The tape comes off relatively easily, although annoyingly it stained my board. I was curious if any of these paints would stick to that due to the glitter on the tape and lift. The black 4.0 powdered a bit, but otherwise we're in luck. If we look at our paints again, the Musu is the blackest, although in this instance it's not hugely different to the black 4.0. But if we do our exposure trick, there you go, you can really see the difference in the darkness. This also brings out the texture in the paints. The black 3.0 is okay, although you can see some brush strokes here. Again, the Musso is fairly velvety, and those scratches you see are actually from me cleaning off the dust before I shot this. But check out the black 4.0. You can actually feel deep rivulets of paint across the top. Because it has struggled to bond to the board, I basically mounted up the paint in the first and second layer to cover it. Let's put the camera back to normal and give it a scratch. Starting with our Bunnings Black, it feels gross like I'm on a chalkboard, but it hasn't scratched too badly. The acrylic weirdly feels worse and is scraped very similar. The Black 3.0, impressively, I can't actually see any scratch on here at all. It's very strong. The Black 4.0, oof, it's gone straight through and so too has the Musu Black. Now for the paint scraper. I was hoping to keep this board, but something makes me think that won't happen after this test. The Bunnings and acrylic stand up fairly strong. I think the Bunnings is slightly stronger than the acrylic. The Black 3.0 is still stronger, but I'm getting some primer showing up through there. And the Black 4.0 has gone right through, and so too has the Musu Black. Well, there you go. Really similar results to the paper test, but if anything, the paint struggled to stick as well to the primed board. It feels like, particularly with the Muso and the Black 4.0, it almost needs something rougher it can stick to, and even though the primer is a matte paint, it's not sticking as well as it did with the paper. We've seen our paints work on 2D objects, but I'd really like to see how they start working on some 3D objects. Some of the most fun projects I've seen done with Vanta Black are 3D objects that, if done correctly, tend to just become holes in space. For me today, I have some ping pong balls here and I'm going to stick them on some sticks and paint them up. 
I've actually primed these balls because the plastic on ping pong balls is that greasy sort of plastic that I've had issues with painting in the past. Adding the primer just gives us a fairer way to test them. Black 3.0 is going on pretty much exactly as it has on the board test. To be fair, it's actually not that difficult to paint this ball. It is coming on a bit thinner than I would have liked, but it's relatively smooth to put down. Musu with my face mask on again. The Musu goes down really well. Strangely enough, I think it's actually easier to paint the 3D ball as I don't have to worry so much about long gentle strokes to minimize brush texture. The Black 4.0 is once again a problem child, but it has gone on much easier than on the flat board. Again, I think the shape helps to stick the paint to the object, which has made this an easier job. And of course, our acrylic and our Bunnings paint go on very easily. I'll give that a few hours. So the first layer is done and surprisingly, it looks like the black 3.0 has the most amount of holes in it. On to the second coat. We're just going to blast through this, otherwise it's as boring as, well, watching paint dry. But predictably, the 3.0, Muso, and Black 4.0 went down really well on top of each other. Again, the 4.0 had a little issue with its thickness, but realistically, it was easier than any other test. And now, we're just gonna let them dry. And here we are done a few hours later. There honestly haven't been any real surprises here with these balls. As far as 3D objects go, they are small, but surprisingly, I found it much easier to paint on compared to the flat swatches. I think it may be because they are small. There's less area the paint has to stretch over before it bonds to itself. Let's check out the overexposed shot. Again, you can clearly see that the Mushu is darker than the rest, but to be fair, I think the black 4.0 has done fairly well here as well. The surface area here is much smoother than the swatches as the paint hasn't mounded and that's made it a much blacker black. Weirdly, the black 3.0 has had some sort of reaction to the first layer of 3.0. If we look at this, it's almost like a lighter powder on it. Right, that's our 3D test. What we've learned here is that most of the paints are actually easier to work with when they're on a 3D shape and that when black 4.0 goes down smoother, it's actually much darker. On to our next test, where we play with the skulls of our enemies. Well, we've seen this paint on a 2D and a 3D object. It's time we got a real world shape in and see what happens. I've seen people do figurines and apples, but for me, I think I'll use the skulls of my enemies. This is Jeff. Jeff owed me money. Now Jeff will live on as an art project. I love Jeff and you'll love him too. He's going to show us what these paints can do on a complex shape. What I'm going to do with Jeff today is paint all three of our specialist colors on him. So black 3.0, Musu and black 4.0. The contours and 3D edges will really give us an excellent idea of how each of these paints handle. I'm not going to bother with our acrylic or our chalkboard paint for this test, as I think we've pretty much established how they look. We're all here just to see our Ultra Blacks in action. So Jeff's resin, like our ping pong balls, I'm not certain if the paints will stick to him. I'm going to use the same spray on flat white primer to give him a few coats to ensure everything is nice and easy with this test. Now, we have our bright and shiny white skull. I'm going to roughly mark down where each paint is going to go. First up, I'm putting black 3.0 on the left side. Immediately, the coverage from the 3.0 isn't as good as I'd hoped for. The skull has a lot of nooks and crannies, and while the paint is going in there fine, there are also some large flatter surfaces on top it's struggling with. You can see here, as I'm painting, how it's sticking and pulling to itself and leaving thin, opaque areas where it hasn't grabbed. I've tried to go over it a few times, but as the paint dries, it's not getting much easier. Our Muzu Black is next, and this is going down much easier and denser. Even though it's a thinner paint, it feels like it has much better coverage. It's also really not having any issues sticking to the flat surfaces as well as the crannies. You can see there are a couple of light patches, but I'll fix that in the next coat. Black 4.0 is really a struggle. I almost feel like I'm dabbing this on and every time I do, I take off half the paint I've just put down. Even around the teeth where it's quite a complex shape and the paint should grab, it's really not. I've gone over it once and now I'm just going over it again. It's super messy and to get coverage, I'm just layering this paint on. I even just squirted the paint onto the skull there to see if I could get more to stick. It honestly didn't help much. 
I'm going to let this one dry for a long time as there's a lot of black 4.0 on here. Interestingly though, as much 4.0 as I layered on, it never ran off when I sat the scale upright. I guess that shows how thick it is. Second coat time. The black 3.0 is sitting much nicer on top of itself. I haven't had to do this second coat anywhere near as thick. The Muso Black has filled itself in nicely and is actually starting to get a really nice coating on top. Now the Black 4.0, honestly I feel I'm saying the same thing here. It's not really sticking to anything but itself. Even with this second coat, there are still opaque areas and places it just hasn't bonded. Because of the issues, I've made an executive decision to do a third coat here. If anything, the third coat has made that Black 3.0 look nicer. It feels smoother. The Muso Black hasn't really changed much from the second coat to the third, still looks great. And now finally, the Black 4.0 finally feels like it's getting a really good coverage on the third coat. I think I've got a nice, flat, even coat here, even if it is very thick. And here's Jeff. So Jeff's pretty much got a mohawk right now. The Muso is obviously still the blackest, but let's just run through the exposure test. As you can see, the Muso is much darker. Interestingly here, with that third coat, the Black 3.0 has become a shade darker and is very, very close to the blackness level of the Black 4.0. Doing this complex shape was not as easy as I thought it would be. I honestly thought a lot of the issues we've seen with the flat surfaces would be solved with all these nooks and crannies for the paint to grab onto. Not so much though. I really struggled with the black 4.0 here because it really didn't want to stick to any surface. I literally had to pour paint onto this third because I couldn't get the whole scale covered. I hoped that the second coat would fix it, which it sort of did because it covered the open patches, but it has left it so uneven. If you could feel the side of the skull in comparison to the other one, it's very rough. I literally couldn't move the paint around to make it any smoother. Well, we've pretty much run out of tests here. The only thing left is to look at how these paints work on a practical art piece. Some people will be planning on using these purely in installation type art, but for some of us, myself included, the aim is to use this stuff on my current artwork. For me, I wanna see if I can integrate this into a painting. How to do this was actually really hard to work out though. I'm predominantly a watercolor painter and with watercolor, there is no ultimate zero black. Everything works via graduations. Trying to figure out an artwork that would be enhanced rather than detracted by using an ultra black took a bit of thinking and a few tests. Finally, I realized if I thought of it as a ink rather than a paint, then I could integrate it into something much, much easier. I've gone with three very similar artworks where I'm using the bright poppy colors of a watercolor face with the intensity of the ultra blacks for hair. Sort of an anime pop thing. I've made it so that each artwork is similar to the next so we can focus on the comparison of the black paints. Oh, and the paper I am using is cold pressed paper. So it has a little bit more texture. So hopefully we won't have any gripping issues. Black 3.0 is painting similarly to how I expected it to. Now I've gotten a little bit used to it, it's like an extra thick acrylic paint and I can control it a little bit better. It goes down smoothly, easily and predictably. Like the first test, I actually think Black 3.0 works better on paper than it did the primer. To give myself the best possible coating, I'm going to do a second coat of the Black 3.0, otherwise we're going to have a few blotchy bits. With our Muzu, I've continued using my PPE here because funnily enough, in an enclosed space like my studio, it smells really bad. Windows open, dog out of the house and partially holding my breath. But after all of that, I'm finding the Muzu Black goes on my paper really smoothly and has a lot better coverage in one coat than the Black 3.0. It's actually so good that I don't think I'm gonna bother with a second coat in the Muzu here. So I've read a few places that you should prime black 4.0 with black 3.0. To give this the best chance of working, I'm going to give it a go here. My first coat will be black 3.0 and after that's dried, I'll do a second coat of the 4.0. Right now, that's all dry. I can say that I don't really feel like it made much of a difference in actually painting. The coverage is better as black 4.0 sticks to 3.0, much the same as it does itself. But as the 3.0 is underneath, we can't see the opaque spots, but it still does feel like it's clumping to itself. Annoying 
Interestingly, while pulling up the tape, I noticed that some of the dry black 4.0 has powdered and fallen from the masking tape onto the whites of our paper. This has stained it fairly badly. Also, for some reason, the paper isn't liking this tape at all, and it's torn. All our artworks are done, and while it's a fairly quick and simple use of the paints, they all enhance rather than dominate, which I think is a good use. I think that the Muso Black and the Black 3.0 artworks were a success and look awesome with the black curtains of hair. If we have a look at it under our overexposed camera, we can see there isn't a huge difference between the dark levels. The Muso edges ahead, but just slightly. I don't feel the Black 4.0 benefited in darkness level from priming with the 3.0, but it did make it a little bit easier to cover. Basically, if the 4.0 had opaque areas, there was the 3.0 underneath, so you couldn't see them. That said, looking at it here, the 3.0 is pretty close in darkness to the 4.0 and that extra difficulty of the priming may not be worth it. I do think the powder that comes off the 4.0 is really annoying. It's fairly heavily stained the white paper. While these are obviously ripped from tape, if they weren't and I wanted to sell them, having ultimate black next to grubby stained white looks terrible. That's it with all our tests. Hopefully I've given you enough today so you can figure out if you want to delve into the blackest of black paints and what black you want to go out and splurge on. For me, each of these paints has been really a very interesting experience. I'd read a lot and heard a lot about all of these paints and I must admit I had preconceived notions as to how they would perform. I thought I was going to come away from these tests proclaiming the black 4.0 as the clear and present winner but honestly, it's not really worked out for it that well. I feel it's been fairly tested today, but it has had the same issues all the way through. It's too thick, too messy, too weak, only sticks to itself, and really isn't that much darker than the 3.0. Maybe this paint needs to be airbrushed on to get the full positive effects, I'm starting to think I might have to buy myself an airbrush so we can test it in the future. I really admire and respect Stuart Semple's ethos with his paint business and what he's given to the art world with his colours. But honestly, this paint doesn't feel like it's made for someone like me. Have you used it? How do you use it? What did you use it on? And did I do something wrong? The Muse Black to me looked obviously the blackest paint in all of the tests. It also felt like it had the best and easiest coverage, even better than the cheap acrylic and the Bunnings paint. It was easy to use, looked amazing, and was much stronger than I'd heard. Performance-wise, it was a five stars. However, I cannot stress enough how noxious this paint is. I am not exaggerating when I say this paint made me feel sick. The paint still stinks for hours after it dries, so I've actually been sticking these tests outside to dry as it's that bad. This paint is amazing, but as you have to fully gear up every time you use it, just so you don't flip and die, it's not super practical. Because it is so black though, I might end up using the paint for a special project or an installment or something specifically in the future, but it'll be a rare occasion. Black 3.0, I think it's been my favorite paint throughout these tests. It has impressed the heck out of me. While it's not the blackest of all our paints, it's pretty close. This black to me feels like what I would consider black to be, and it's not until you see it compared to the normal acrylic blacks that you realize how much blacker it is. This paint is easy to use, good coverage, excellent blackness level, isn't going to kill you and reacts predictably. I genuinely feel like I'd be able to and will include this paint in my everyday art. I'd love to know what everyone thinks in the comments, but for me and my work, personally, black 3.0 would be the most useful of all the ultra blacks. So that's it everyone. I hope you enjoyed exploring our three ultra black paints. Let me know which is your favorite and what you would use it on. I am so curious how you guys would actually use these paints in your projects. I'm going to keep adding to our reviews with more pencils and paint to come. So check back in a couple of weeks to see our next pencil review, which I think is Black Widow. I'm really out of sync with these videos, so it might not be, but I think it is. If in the meantime, you want to chat and hang out, I'm on Twitch most days. Otherwise, there are links below for all the other social stuff. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.